Okay, I'm going to expect you guys to take notes along with me. Some of you have already encountered things like this in our work, but I'm just trying to fill in the gaps from the time I was gone and make sure I'm not skipping things or assuming you figured it out. Please write this system of equations on your paper. Okay, in our book, they show two ways to do this, and neither one of them is the way I typically do it. Um, officially, method one for solving this kind of system is to compare the slopes and y-intercepts. In order to do that, oh, I should not be using pencil. I'll rewrite that in pen. Method one, and this is going to be the case for a couple of them. The first official way is to compare slopes and y-intercepts, which means that the equations have to be converted to slope-intercept form. The first one is already in that form. It's already in y equals mx plus b form. We need to convert the second one. And to get the y by itself, what am I going to move in this one? The x is going to be plus x. So I'm going to rewrite these down here as y equals x minus 1. And the second equation is y is equal to x plus 2. What do you notice about the slopes? They're the same. What do you notice about the y-intercept? They're different. What do we know about e equations when they're graphed that have the same slope? They're parallel. And if the lines are parallel, are they ever, ever going to cross? Nope. No, ma'am. And if they're never going to cross, we don't get an XY pair. We don't get an XY pair because they never have a place where they're going to intersect, right? So these kinds of special systems are no solutions. Now, according to our book, method two is to graph them. And if we graph these, we would see that they're parallel. I will be honest with you, I rarely ever use method one or two when I'm solving these because I don't know when I'm starting that I have a no solution until I've worked with it already. Method three for me is the main way to do it. How many of you have found a no solution in some of the work we've been doing over the last few days? And how did you find it? You started solving and your variable disappeared and you had two numbers that were not equal to each other and you were like, wait, this doesn't work. And you brought it over to me and you're like, Mrs. Ellis, what do I do with this? Right? So some of you found those already. That's typically the way it happens because you don't know just looking at this that they're going to be a no solution. So if I'm going to solve this, that's what the method three is, solve algebraically. which just means use substitution or elimination because those are the algebraic ways. This is y is equal to x plus 1. I'm going to take, I'm sorry, not x plus 1, x minus 1. I'm going to take that and I'm going to substitute it into the second equation. So I'm going to write negative x plus x minus 1 equals 2. I took this x minus 1 and I plugged it in where the y is. What is negative x plus x going to be? They're going to zero out, and we're left with negative 1 equals 2. Is that true? 
So we're going to have to put the slash through the equal sign because it doesn't make sense. This is false. And that means it has no solution. We don't have an x because it zeroed out. We did negative x plus x. We got a zero for x's. If you don't have an x, you can't have an xy pair. Does that make sense? Yeah. And the reality is if we graph these, they would be parallel. Parallel lines never have an intersection because they will never run into each other unless you graph the way I do and then sometimes they do. That's why I don't like use graphing. Draw a line, we are gonna do number two. The second way of getting a special system of equations. I don't think we've run across this yet in the work you guys have done, but there will be some like it today. Y is equal to two X plus one and two X minus Y plus one equals zero. Mr. Roy, do you have these written down? Okay. Method one is to compare slopes and y-intercepts. In order to do that, they have to be in slope-intercept form. The first one is, it's y equals 2x plus 1. We have to convert the second one to be in that same format. What's going to happen with this 2x? To move it to the other side of the equation, it has to be a minus 2x. So I get negative 2x. Whoops, I should start that over. Negative y equals negative 2x minus 1. Because both of these are positive, so to move them, they're both going to end up negative. I have a negative y which means I have to divide by, divide by negative one. And what is doing dividing by negative one due to all those symbols? Positive. Turns them all positive. So I'm going to rewrite it down here as y is equal to 2x plus one. What do you notice? They're the same thing. They're the same thing. So if I was to graph these, I would put that line on the graph and then that's it. Because both equations are exactly the same. They're going to make the same line. Can you guys picture that? That means that these have infinite solutions. Every single point on the line, as you graph it, would be an xy pair that would make it true. The entire line just keeps going and going. And every time you hit a point on that graph, that xy pair works. And the next one works. And the next one works. That's why they're infinite. Now the reality is I rarely do it this way because I usually just jump in and start working with the equations. So method two is like method three up above. It's to solve algebraically. I've written that word three times today and every time I think I'm messing it up. It is a weird word. Solve algebraically. <clears throat> if I look back to my original equations, this right here is equal to y, which means I can plug it into the second equation for y, because you guys know my favorite method is substitution. So I get 2x minus 2x plus 1 plus 1 equals 0. I took this value of y from the first equation and I put it in the second equation where the y is. <coughs> I have a little distribution to do here, don't I? This is an invisible one that's going to get distributed to these two, which as we just set up above means we change the symbols for both. So I get 2x minus 2x minus 1 plus 1 equals 0. What do you notice is happening? Are we going to have an x left? No. It's going to get zeroed out. And negative 1 and plus 1? Zero. Zeroes out. 
that means this side equals zero and this side equals zero. Is zero equals zero a true statement? Yeah, boy. It's true. That means we have infinite solutions. We don't have one XY pair. We have every XY pair possible on that line. Okay. Draw one more line and we're going to do one more short thing before I stop recording here. A little bit of vocabulary. Independent <coughs> systems and dependent systems. Our textbook has a much wordier version of the definitions, but I'm going to just bring it down to a couple of words each. Independent solutions are the kind of, of um, I'm sorry, independent systems are the kind of systems you guys have been solving a lot. They have exactly one solution. And it's going to be an XY pair. It's where the two things cross. A dependent system is the opposite of this. Instead of having exactly one solution, one XY pair, it has infinite solutions. Then there's also what's called consistent systems. Consistent systems have at least one solution. <clears throat> and inconsistent Inconsistent systems have no solutions. Okay, that's it. I'm going to have you guys doing just a few problems. Few enough that even though we have a short class today, I think you'll get it done here. The work today is on page 423, and I want you guys to do numbers 2 through 10 and try number 11. Number 11 is a word problem, and there's an example of the word problem Example on page 422. It's right across from it, so you don't even have to turn the page. We are going to be working with word problems with systems over the next couple days. So I want you just to try this one today, and then I will be working you guys through some more. We started the systems of equations work with word problems because this is the most relevant chapter in this book to real life. And I think once you guys start seeing not these x, y equations, the substitution and elimination. When you see the context of how these are in the real world, I think you'll, you'll understand them better.